That our deen, our Islamic way of life, is nothing more than advice, sincere advice to one another. So, regardless of how the person came up, we are all Muslim brethren, and we all should love each other, Lillah Rabbul Izzah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Him alone. With that said, as we all know, that over almost 50% of the Muslim world, we profess and we claim and we attribute our following to the Hanafi Madhab. And I'm not here to bash any particular Madhab. But what I'm here to remind us going forward, after we had fasted the blessed month of Ramadan, and we had completed these first 10 days of Dhul Hijj, and we fasted the 9th of Arafah, the 9th of Dhul Hijj, that going forward, 
whether we are coming back, returning from Hajj, or now we have fasted, we should be looking forward and trying to be a better practicing Muslim in word and deed. What I mean by this is that we all call ourselves Sunni, Ahl Sunnah, or Ahl Hadith. But at the end of the day, when we have our differences amongst ourselves, we have a squabble, we take it too personal. We have to understand, if we really want to have that characteristic of being a person of Iman, we need to attribute our actions, our speech, and our intentions to the Quran and Sunnah, not to any particular madhab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of the Imams of the Sunnah, whom I mean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had described to us in no uncertain terms in his book, when we have the dispute amongst ourselves, where should we return our issues? Allah just says in his book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swearing by his magnificent self that we can have no iman no true faith in Allah until and unless we resolve to take all of our disputes to Allah. To Allah, to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa And then we should find no resistance within ourselves. But you salimuna tasliman. We should have full submission. We should have full submission to that. With that said, my dear Prophet Iman, the majority of us, as we all know, would profess to be a follower, a follower of the noble Imam Abu Hanifa, Allah, which is fine to be a follower of a madhab. But on this blessed and auspicious morning of Eid, I want to speak about the importance of defending the people of the Sunnah. And I want to start by being a staunch defender of the Imma, the scholars and the leaders of the Sunnah. The Honorable Imams, Methulan, Imam Abu Hanifa, who they attribute, we attribute ourselves to being a follower of Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Hanbal, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, or I'm not saying that I am a Wahhabi Salafist. I am not professing or calling to any particular madhab. But what we should be doing as people who call ourselves Sunni Muslims is that we need to defend the honor of the Sunnah of Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was the way of Al Mustafa Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That is what we should be thinking about. That is where our intention should be towards. What was he calling us to? Submission to the book of Allah Azawajal and to his methodology, his way. The Imams of the Sunnah, they were defenders of the Sunnah. They were not defenders of their way. And as we know that all of them, the consensus, ijma of the imma, of the scholars of the Sunnah and the Salaf, they said, إِذَا صَحَ الْحَدِيثِ هُوَ مَذْهَبِي if the hadith is authentic, then that is my madhab. Take whatever I said and throw it against the wall. That was their way, and that's what they called towards. My dear Basal Maniman, if we become more acquainted with the life of these blessed Imams, then inshallah we'll understand what they were all about and what they called their students towards. Alhamdulillah, I mean, I am not here to pick on any particular madhab, but I want us today to leave this place with the feeling of becoming a real Hanafi. What is the meaning of being a Hanafi? Because we hear this when we get into debates, and we're being serious when we say this, and with all due love and respect, we must love and respect each other and respect each other's opinion. But from time to time, which is the overwhelming majority, we say that this is my madhab. 
This is the madhab that I follow. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. As if the imma of the sunnah, they would say that this is my way. La. First advice I have, and not to pick on our brothers who follow this madhab, is for our Hanafi brothers, with all love and respect, that if we really and truly, as we claim to be a follower of the great Imam Abu Hanifa, we need to be better acquainted with those who we follow as Imams. For starters, his name or his punya was not Abu Hanifa. Many of us say that we are Hanafi, but my Asif Shadid, I'm very sorry, and at the same time, I'm very happy to enlighten you all that his kunya was not Abu Hanifa, due to him having a daughter named Hanaf. It has been recorded that he had only one son named Hamid. So, for starters, we need to be better acquainted with those people who we attribute our Islam to. Abu Hanifa was not his name. Abu Hanifa was not his kunya. First and foremost, he was well known as Al Imam Al Azim, the great Imam, because he was the first of the Imams, Aimma. Imam Malik came after him, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Layd ibn Saad, Imam Shaf, Muhammad ibn Sharif Shafi, and so on and so forth. Those are the well known Imams. His name was Al Imam Al Azim, and his that was his kunya, Al Imam Al Azim. But his name was Al Nu'man ibn Thabit. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We love these great Imams. But who was Al Nu'man ibn Thabit? He was a great Imam who was born in the country of Iraq. And he was from the black tribe of Azut and Jat of Kufa from the region of Kufa in the country of Iraq. So, my dear Pastor Iman, with all due respect, let us cease and desist. Stop attributing our ignorance, our lack of knowledge, and our bida in most cases, our innovation to these great Imams. They are dead. May Allah subhanahu wa bless them for the effort that they made towards defending the sunnah. But none of us has a right to attribute ignorance, jahl, and innovation, bida, to these imams. Because they fought staunchly. Imam Ahmed ibn Hamd was imprisoned for years for his position on the Quran not being created. Many of his predecessors, they were set free because they said that the Quran was created. He said, La, Imam Muhammad ibn Hanbal, he said, La, Kalam Allah. It's from Allah and it will return back to Allah. So, my dear Muslim, we have to stop attributing bid'ah to the Imam of the Sunnah. And we have to understand clearly that their message was one and the same. They had differences of opinions. But their message was one and the same. It is a hadith, but who are madhabi. With that said, my dear Prophet, a real Hanafi, inshallah, is should be our hadith, our goal, in our desire and our intention. As the hadith states from the Prophet that Allah Azza wa Jal says, In in abdi shiatin and him. Allah Azawajal says, the Prophet said that Allah said this hadith Qudsi, that I created my slaves, Hunafa. Then it was the Shiatin, the devils, that misled them from their deen. And we know that the Prophet said, Kullu Mawlud Yulid Aya Fitra. All of the children were born in a natural state of submission and accepting of the truth. But it was their parents who turned him to Yahud, Nasara, or Zoroastrian. My dear Basil Iman, there are many of our well-intended Muslim parents 
who are teaching their innocent children that they must be a blind follower. So that I am Hanafi. This is incorrect. From so many angles, as I just mentioned, his name wasn't Hanaf Abu Hanifa. He was an Imam al Azim. And what did he call towards? He called towards the Sunnah. He said, if my position was incorrect, take it and throw it against the wall. A tabit, a sunnah, follow the sunnah. The meaning of the word Hanafi or Hunafa, it means that we must purely dedicate our lives towards Tawheed. Allah Azawajal's oneness. As Allah Azawajal says, Shun the rich of the idols and shun lying speech. Not associating any partners with Allah. So Hunafa, the meaning of Hunafa Lillah, it means that we are sincerely submitting ourselves in our speech and our actions and our intentions to Allah Azza by shunning all forms of innovation, bid'ah and shurkiyat, those traditions that have crept into the pure deen of monotheism, worshiping Allah Azza alone. There are so many things that have crept in that we love to attribute to the Hanafi way. Which is an outright lie and deception. And Imam Al Azam, the great Imam, Aman ibn Thabit, my dear Basil and Imam, they were not infallible. They made mistakes. Anyone after the Prophet would make mistakes. As Imam Malik, the Imam of Dar Hijra, he said, he said, everyone's speech we can take or we can reject, except for the companion of that grave. And he pointed to the grave of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So my dear Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is a shame, it is a disrespect, it's apt to attribute ignorance and innovation to the A'imma of the Sunnah. My dear Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did Allah Azza wa Jalla say? What did Allah Azza wa Jalla say in Surah Al-Bayyina? Lam yakun. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلَسٍ لَهُ الدِّينَ هُنَا فَاءَ وَيَقِيمُوا صَلَاةً وَيُؤْتُوا زَكَاةً وَالذَّارِقَ الدِّينَ الْقَيِّمَةً Simplicity of a statement and meaning the Ahl Kitab they were commanded to do nothing more but that they should worship Allah alone and do not associate any partners with Allah why did Allah just say this to them? Because the people of the book, they would always attribute their actions to their priests and their rabbis. To their priests and their rabbis. Now we have many well-intended Muslims, when they're stuck in a rut, we say we're Hanafi. We attribute our, our actions to Imam Al-Azim. La hawla wa la quota illa billah. My dear Muslim Imam. The Hunafa, or being known as a Hanafi, is opposite, in opposition to a Taghut. And what is the Taghut? Anything that is worship, put as a rival between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's obedience. We should never ever want to put anything in between Qawl and Sim wa ta. We hear and we obey. When we hear the truth, we should not shun the truth. We are supposed to shun a ridge, a ridge. This is what we're supposed to shun. False deities, a ta'ud. This is the meaning of becoming a real Hanafi in word and deed. My dear Pastor, my man. Many of us have developed a sort of an identity crisis to the point that we hold on blindly <coughs> to these things without knowledge, without understanding, without even wanting to better ourselves. We hold on to understandings which are totally against Islam. Why? 
We said that this is what I used to do, and this is what I know to be right, and this is what I say I am doing because I am Hanafi. La hawla wa la quwata la billah. My dear brother, my dear man, when we look at this day that we have today, Yom Tashrif, the days of slaughtering, the days of cutting the meat and spreading them out amongst our friends and our families, what is this symbolic of? The sacrifice of the Khalil, the friend of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Kana ummah. He was a nation within himself. And he would shun all forms of shirk. What Allah says, In Ibrahim kana ummatin qanatan lillah hanifun. Allah mekum minan mushrikeen. Verily Ibrahim alayhi salam was a leader a nation within himself and he was nothing nothing at all in terms of being a mushrik and what is a mushrik those associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dear brother my man it is important for us on this auspicious day of Eid Eid al-Adha that I tell you all about the importance of Tawheed and I leave us with this message of Tawheed that Ibrahim alayhi salam he was an example of leaving all of those people all of those things that were anything near to attributing anything to shirk of Allah <coughs> Allah says closing on Europe Millat Ibrahim Ilaman Safiya Nafsa. And whosoever turns away from the Millah, the methodology of Ibrahim, except they have fooled themselves. And as such, my dear Basalman Iman, we follow the Millah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't see him, we can't touch him, but we can feel his breath from his books. We have the hadith, we have the statements, we have the Quran, we have the tafasir. We have many scholars today who are calling to the correct understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. So my dear Basama Iman, as such we need to be an excellent example of what Islam means to ourselves first and foremost. We need to stop lying and cheating ourselves by saying and claiming and professing to be a follower of a particular madhab. That's why I do what I do. My dear Muslim man, I want to leave us to this last ayah that Allah just said, Surah Nisab, concerning calling the Millah of Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنْ دِينًا مِنْ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجَهُ لِلَّهُ وَهُوَ مُحْسَنًا وَتَبْلَ مِلَةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَتَقَذَ اللَّهُ وَتَقَوَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا And who is better, who has a better deen than one who submits his face to Allah and he is a good doer, a muhsin and follows the deen of Ibrahim, the Hanif and Allah did take Ibrahim as a Khalil, as a close friend the so many Muslim man, the true Hanafi in word and deed and intention is the one who lives a life with purpose, avoids blind following, avoid avoids bidah, avoid anything of shirk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala minna wa minkum.